Amal. And the amal here is mean, means worship. Actions of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah wants from us. But these actions have some very, very important prerequisites. In order for our actions to be accepted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need some very important conditions to proceed it. Number one is true and complete iman. This is not an action that may, must be mixed with shirk. It is not an action that must be mixed with kufr. The second thing is, we need sincerity. Oh brothers and sisters, we need sincerity. We need ikhlas. Our actions are of no good if they are insincere. Mountains of actions, mountains of deeds of worship will be no, of no benefit if they have not been done sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we remind myself and yourself, brothers and sisters, of that hadith, we all know it, but we need to hear it. Even if we heard it every day, it wouldn't be enough for us. If we woke up and this is the first thing we read of our day, alhamdulillah, it would be good for us. And this is about the first three people to stand in front of Allah on the day of judgment. The first three people to be taken to account by Allah on the day of judgment. The first one is a man who used to give charity. Or the first one is the man who used to fight jihad. Jihad. He used to fight in the path of Allah. Jihad. And we know that is the most excellent of the deeds and there is nothing that compared to it if you sat in the mosque and you prayed and you fasted and you gave charity non-stop it wouldn't be the equivalent or that might be the equivalent of fighting jihad but who could pray and fast and give charity non-stop and be in the mosque while a person is fighting jihad it's not possible you couldn't do it meaning there is no deed comparable to it so there is a man who went to fight jihad. And when he stood in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah asked him, Allah questioned him, what did you do with the bounties and the favors that I bestowed upon you? And this man said, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, I fought jihad in your path until I was slain a martyr. And Allah will say to him, you lied. You lied. You fought jihad, so the people will call you brave. And the people will call you a fighter. And they called you that. And Allah will order him to be dragged on his face into the hellfire. And then another man will come. This man used to give charity. He used to spend in the path of Allah. And Allah will question him, what did you do with the favors and the bounties that I gave to you? He will say, oh Allah, I spent charity in every place and every cause that I could for your sake. And Allah will say to him, you lied. You spent charity so that the people will call you generous and charitable and they called you that. And Allah will order him to be dragged on his face into the hellfire. And then another man will come. A man who learned to recite the Quran and he learned religious knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, What did you do with the favors that I bestowed upon you? And he will say, Oh Allah, I learned your book and recited it. And I learned religious knowledge and taught it for your pleasure. And Allah will say to him, you lied. You learned Quran, so the people will call you a reciter. And you learned religious knowledge, so the people will call you a scholar. And they called you that. And he will be ordered to be dragged on his face into the hellfire. These are the first three people who will be bought and accounted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are the best of the deeds. Jihad, giving charity, learning the Qur'an and memorizing it. 
and religious knowledge and being a scholar. Yet my brothers and sisters, they did not do it for the pleasure of Allah. They were not sincere in their actions. They did their actions to show off. They did their actions to get praise. They did their actions to get admiration from others. They sought the pleasure not of Allah, but of other people. So whoever does that on the day of judgment, Allah will say, go and seek your reward from those people for whom you did those actions for. If you want a reward, go and get your reward from them. So this is the first matter, brothers and sisters. And I think, I think if we spent time and we spent our energy and we focused our attention on making our deeds sincere, we wouldn't have time and energy to be looking at the faults of our brothers and sisters. Blessed is the one who is so preoccupied with his or her own faults that that person doesn't have time to see the faults in others. That's a fortunate person. Sincerity, brothers and sisters. Who can achieve that first? That is our goal, to be sincere, to do it for Allah's pleasure. But that is not enough for our actions to be accepted. The second is, the third is rather, that the action has to be correct. It's not enough that our actions are sincere, but our actions have to be correct. They have to be according to the Sharia. They have to be according to the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They have to be, if Allah is going to accept them as actions of worship, for which we are going to get rewarded, they must be actions that Allah has approved of. And therefore, it is essential that before any action, we need ilm, we need knowledge. Knowledge precedes action. Before action comes knowledge. We have to study, we have to know what the sharia requires of us, what Allah wants from us, brothers and sisters. What does Allah want from us? What actions does Allah expect from us? What are the ibadat that Allah requires from us? And that needs knowledge. That means we need to study the book of Allah. That means we need to study the guidance of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we need to look into the example of the companions and the scholars who took from them and learned from them. And what is important also in respect to this matter is to know which actions are more important and which actions are less important. We need to know the superiority of the actions. We need to know which one takes precedence over what. For a simple example that I'm sure we are all familiar with. A simple example which I'm sure we all are familiar with is that we all know that the obligatory actions are more important and take precedence over the supererogatory actions. If we are busy spending our time doing supererogatory actions, but we have neglected the obligatory actions, there is something wrong with our actions. There is a deviation and a misguidance in it. A man spends all his nights, all his nights, he doesn't sleep. He spends all his night praying to Hajjud. But he sleeps during the day and misses his fard. This is not correct. This is not correct. This is misguidance. And there are many people who do not understand this issue. And they have confused this issue. And they 